news starts with breaking news. It's breaking right now at noon. You are looking live at a protest that just got underway in Clareton over the death of George Floyd. People still clearly showing up for that. And in just a few minutes, Catherine, a memorial for Floyd will get underway in his hometown of Houston, Texas. Plus, the officer accused of murdering him is just hours away from appearing in court for the very first time. Thanks for joining us, everyone. I'm Peggy Finnegan. And I'm Catherine Amenta. Certainly, as you see, a lot to bring you this afternoon as demonstrations against police brutality continue to march throughout our nation. Starting with that protest, again, starting to gather in Clareton. These are live pictures from our crew on the ground. Just a few people coming in, one there with a sign. The demonstration is starting at the Clareton Education Center on Waddell Avenue. Police say the participants plan to remain right there on the school grounds. Looks like they're gathering by the playground. They say they will not march on the streets. We will be speaking with protesters this afternoon and have much more tonight. Channel 11 News at 5. And happening now, the third and final memorial service for George Floyd just got underway in his hometown of Houston, Texas. A public viewing starts at noon. It will go until 6 tonight. It is open to the public, but visitors have to wear a mask and gloves. Floyd's funeral will be held tomorrow, followed by his burial at Houston Memorial Gardens Cemetery. He will be laid to rest next to his mother. New at noon, the Newspaper Guild of Pittsburgh is demanding the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette change course after the paper was accused of removing black journalists from protest coverage. Post-Gazette reporter Alexis Johnson posted this last week, and you see those four pictures there, and then she wrote horrifying scenes and aftermath from selfish looters who don't care about the city. Oh, wait, sorry. No, these are pictures from a Kenny Chesney concert tailgate. The next day, Johnson's editors pulled her from protest coverage and others in the newsroom who spoke out against the decision. Johnson speaking at a news conference this morning. Take a listen to the sound. As a black woman, as a Pittsburgh native, as the daughter of a retired state trooper and a retired probation officer, um, it's a shame that I wasn't able to bring all of those experiences and my background uh, to cover this story. Our Joe Arena is at this uh, press conference right now, and he is texting with me, and he said they also added, according to her lawyers and the head of the newspaper guild, the newspaper never gave a reason as to why she was pulled off the coverage. The Black Political Empowerment Project is also calling for Johnson to be allowed to cover protests. And new at noon, leaders from Pittsburgh Public Schools held a march this morning pushing for systemic change and accountability in policing. Channel 11's Jillian Hartman explains why the timing of this demonstration is so significant. Well, this morning, Pittsburgh Public School teachers and leaders led a peaceful march with students, parents, and community members together demanding change. The march started at exactly 8.46 this morning, representing the 8 minutes and 46 seconds that George Floyd was on the ground in police custody. About 200 people joined the two-mile march, together chanting for change and solidarity. We saw a boy leading the march, holding a sign that read, My Life Matters. We should not have to watch a video to be outraged. The march started at Pittsburgh Steerett School in Point Breeze. Superintendent Dr. Anthony Hamlet says after seeing the peaceful protests in our city and nationwide, Pittsburgh Public Schools wanted to be part of the movement and educate kids about racism. We've got to begin to educate our students around racism. Um, so we have some of the more d d diverse diversity in our schools. And as we have that diversity, we have an opportunity to teach around different cultures and how we tolerate each other and understand others' cultures. And I think that that can be a beginning. Now, the two-mile march ended here at the Pittsburgh Coolfax School. I also got a chance to talk to some students and parents who joined this morning's march. I'll tell you what changes they want to see tonight at 5. Reporting in Squirrel Hill, I'm Jillian Hartman, Channel 11 News. Several members of the Allegheny County Council are planning to introduce a plan that would ban the use of some non-lethal weapons. Councilwoman Bethany Hallam posted this tweet saying, at this Tuesday's meeting, I will be introducing an ordinance banning the use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and flashbang grenades in Allegheny County. The proposal also points out that the use of tear gas in warfare 
is actually banned by the Geneva Protocol and that people with health issues like asthma are at increased risk of complications. Meanwhile, Mayor Bill Peduto has called for change in the way police do business, and that is drawing more criticism. We got a letter last night from Patrick Knepp. He's the vice president for the Pittsburgh Fraternal Order of Police. And in the letter to Mayor Peduto and Chief of Staff Dan Gilman, he says the reforms announced last week are reforms the police department has already implemented since 2015. Knepp went on to say he wants accountability from elected officials, saying in part, quote, I humbly ask all to help unite, not divide. Bring elected officials to the table instead of violence to the streets. You can read the entire letter right now on our website, WPXI.com, or on our WPXI News app. And that is also where you will find the police reforms that the mayor announced last week. In just a few hours, the man accused of murdering George Floyd will be in court for the first time. Former officer Derek Chauvin was initially charged with third-degree murder when he was arrested, but the charges were upgraded to second-degree last week. NBC's Gabe Gutierrez is in Minneapolis with the push to reform the city's police department. Fired Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin is preparing for his first court appearance, facing charges of second-degree murder and manslaughter after the death of George Floyd. Chauvin still declining to publicly comment, the future of the Minneapolis Police Department now uncertain. One day after the mayor was booed for not committing to abolishing the police, a veto-proof majority of the city council pledged to disband the department. We're not talking about hitting the eject button on the police tomorrow. We're talking about engaging a plan uh, uh, to create a, a public safety system that works for everyone. Whether it's dismantling departments or reinvesting in other types of programs, growing demands to defund the police are now being heard across the country. In New York City, Mayor Bill de Blasio is moving some funds from police to youth and social services. In Los Angeles, Mayor Eric Garcetti is pledging to cut as much as $150 million from the police budget. Critics of defunding say less money won't solve the problem. Defunding is a nice catchphrase. But in reality, you're defunding police organizations that, for the most part, are already significantly underfunded. All this as more disturbing videos emerge of police arresting black men. In Fairfax County, Virginia, an officer is seen using a stun gun on a man Friday, later hitting him on the head. The officer is now charged with assault. In Alameda, California, police have released this video of an arrest last month, which is also under investigation. The man says he was dancing outside his home. As for the idea of defunding the Minneapolis Police Department, city council members say it could take up to a year to figure out exactly how that will work. The mayor here says that he wants to reform the department, not abolish it. Gabe Gutierrez, NBC News, Minneapolis. Pittsburgh Police Chief Scott Schubert is explaining why he joined protesters on Friday and took a knee on West Liberty Avenue. In a lengthy statement, Chief Schubert wrote, he did it for all the minorities who have experienced decades and centuries of systemic racism and discrimination for all the peaceful protesters who want real and meaningful change. He also said that he did it for Pittsburgh officers who have focused for years on building bridges within all of our communities. Right now, Pittsburgh police are trying to find a man who's accused of injuring a police officer. We showed you these pictures over the weekend. Police telling us the man in a picture, in the picture, excuse me, threw an explosive last Saturday near Mellon Square. It went off and it injured a police officer. Please call Pittsburgh Police if you know who this man is. Taking a live look at the Capitol this afternoon where lawmakers just unveiled a sweeping new police reform bill. It would ban chokeholds and no-knock no warrants in drug cases. Channel 11 Samantha Manning explains the other proposed changes. The new bill is called the Justice in Policing Act. Democrats in Congress say it will bring more fairness and racial equality to police departments. 
It would change police practices and it aims to combat racial profiling. The bill would make it easier to hold police officers accountable. It would expand the Justice Department's powers to investigate and prosecute police misconduct. A key part of the legislation would change what's known as qualified immunity. That's the law that shields police officers from being held personally liable for alleged civil rights violations. A profession where you have the power to kill should be a profession that requires highly trained officers who are accountable to the public. Now, some Republicans have expressed support for legislation to address police misconduct, but it's still unclear if this proposal is something Republicans will get on board with to pass. In Washington, Samantha Manning, Channel 11 News. Time 12.09. Some pleasant news. You will definitely need the sunglasses and sunscreen if you're heading out this afternoon. <laughs> you need it hit this weekend, too. Right? Severe weather Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier joins us now to time out the temperatures for us. Danielle? Ladies, we're certainly enjoying a couple of days in a row of sunshine, and today is no different. We've got a look over the city. Lots of sunshine out there to go around. 71 in Butler right now, 73 in Pittsburgh, Washington, and Greensburg. The other Another great thing about today's weather is it is feeling comfortable outside because our dew points are in the 40s. So if we see these numbers start getting up into the mid 60s, that's when we know it's pretty humid out there. Our swimming forecast for this afternoon, plenty of sunshine, but yes, you'll need the sunscreen if you're hitting the pool. Temperature up to 81 degrees this afternoon. I do have the latest forecast, which includes an uptick in the humidity for Tuesday. I've been updating that forecast for you, and I have new information on that uh, threat for thunderstorms for the middle part of the week when I see you back here in a few minutes. Thanks, Danielle. New at noon, Allegheny County has just released its daily coronavirus update. There are five new cases since yesterday, one new hospitalization, no new deaths. And of course, those are the kind of numbers that leaders like to see as more and more businesses reopen in this green phase. Still ahead, the changes implemented today at local Catholic churches that let more parishioners worship. Plus, the push to change the rules for voters on Pennsylvania waterways. And why some activists say they're encouraged by the local response to police violence. You're streaming WPXI now. Channel 11 expands its streaming live newscasts. When other stations are national, Channel 11 News is local right here at 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on WPXI now.
Channel 11 Morning News brings you weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Let me get you prepared for the week. Now we've expanded our weather to help you prepare for the day ahead. Definitely the heavy rain gear today. Morning Watch to Channel 11 Morning News. We're on from 4.30 to 7 a.m. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Allegheny County. A call for unity in the Hill District. Organizers said the event was not just about George Floyd, but about all those in Pittsburgh who have died from gun violence. People packed Freedom Corner yesterday afternoon. Channel 11's Melanie Gillespie has their message of solidarity. But the fact that it's happening, that we have people who weren't concerned before and now have a concern, people who are speaking up and wouldn't usually speak up. Those are the people that we need to change. I just want to gain knowledge from it and be able to like take stuff back to my community and my county. We want to live in peace, not rest in peace. This event put on by Stop the Violence Pittsburgh brought together speakers from state reps to church leaders and community activists, all sharing their experiences and feelings following the murder of George Floyd, sparking nationwide protests. I've been a vocal opponent against police brutality for many years. And uh, because of my reputation and uh, my relationship with the people in the community, they know my stance on this and they felt that I would be the perfect person to speak up. I just want to be treated equally and have freedom and be able to breathe, honestly. Bridging together Pittsburghers from every age, race, and background to bring a future of change and hope right here at home. Oh, we're not expecting them to actually know what it feels like to be inside of our skin or walk in our shoes, but the fact that all dominations are coming out, all races are coming out, it shows us that they are on the freedom side and that they understand. Melanie Gillespie, Channel 11 News. That rally lasted for more than three hours and more than a dozen people spoke to a crowd of about 200. Community members have created a new relief fund to help black-owned businesses damaged during the protests. So far, the Pittsburgh Black Business Relief Fund has raised $34,000, and the money is being raised through a GoFundMe and Inventrify campaign. According to our partners at the Pittsburgh Business Times, that money will be now used to help fix up the Boost Mobile store on Liberty Avenue that was damaged during protests two weekends ago. And then any overflow money will go towards mini grants for black owned businesses around the city. New at noon, a reward is being offered to help find the person who stole some equipment from the Hempfield Volunteer Fire Department. It happened early yesterday morning. The department says someone broke into several cars on West Lend Drive and the thief took equipment from a fire department command truck, including a chainsaw and various DeWalt brand tools and batteries. The department is offering two free pulls at its next raffle to whoever helps to catch the burglar. Support is growing to toughen penalties in Pennsylvania for boating under the influence. Right now, penalties are similar to those that drivers face on the road. But measures to stiffen the law are gaining support in Pennsylvania legislature. It calls for counting BUI, boating under the influence, and DUI offenses together to trigger stronger penalties for multiple offenses like DUI. The legal limit for a BUI is a blood alcohol concentration of 0.08% or higher. Severe weather, Team 11 forecast. Hope you're having a great Monday as we take a look over the city. 73 degrees right now. The heat index is also 73 because we have low humidity today. So fantastic weather, feels comfortable outside. We're going to carry that sunshine all the way through this afternoon and this evening. Temperature goes up to about 75 at 1 o'clock and near 80 at 3. 81 degrees for the 5 o'clock temperature. So we're heating it up. Yesterday's high was 76 for a comparison there. So warmer this afternoon. Here's our UV index for forecast for today. It is 10. It's very high, so we're burn time 15 minutes, and you'll need that sunscreen, sunglasses, hat, and find some shade from time to time. Of course, you're also going to want to check on your pets. You don't want to leave them outside for an extended period of time either. Here's the forecast for tonight. Clear sky, calm winds. Temperature will be 60 degrees, so it's not going to be as cool as what we've had over the last couple of mornings. This morning it was 52 degrees, and the prior morning it was 53 over the weekend, so it's going to be a little bit better tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon, it is getting hot. You know, we've been talking about this for days now, that this would most likely be one of our hottest of the week. 
on Tuesday. You can see our forecast high is 91 degrees. And should we get there, it would be the first time all year here in Pittsburgh. The warmest so far is 88 degrees, and we're already going to be at 88 by about the 1 o'clock hour. Now, when you factor in the humidity, the temperatures are going to feel a little bit hotter. I'll show you that in a second. Area-wide, though, we're going with 92 in Greensburg, 93 in Uniontown, and 93 in Beaver. So we're all going to be kind of sweating uh, for the afternoon tomorrow. I've updated the humidity forecast. It looks like some newer data coming in last night and even this morning is showing Tuesday's humidity levels coming up a little bit more so than the previous data. So now it does look like it may feel a little bit muggy, unfortunately, for us on Tuesday. Uh, earlier model runs were showing it a little more dry. But the dew points are coming up in the data, which means the humidity will come up and it's going to feel more muggy again on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, though, is still the day where it's going to feel tropical-like as the remnants of of the tropical storm uh, continue to push their way off to the east and uh, lift to the north as well. So when you factor in the humidity to the air temperature on Tuesday, this is what it's going to feel like. Lower 90s across much of the area, if not a little bit higher than that as we work our way into the afternoon. Here's a look at our 90 degree stats. Our average is 9 for the year. So as I mentioned, we haven't seen any and we do look to see that on Tuesday. Here's the five-day forecast with your weekend always in view. 88 Wednesday could get in on a stray shower or an isolated storm late Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. And then Wednesday afternoon and Wednesday evening will bring a chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms. Some of those could be severe. So we're going to have uh, more on that coming up in the next half hour. And uh, definitely a cooler back half of the week with temperatures nearing 80 for highs. Your weekend is always in view. Unsettled from time to time, but right now no widespread coverage on the data just showing a chance for an isolated shower storm with highs a little bit cooler in the lower 70s. Concern over a spike in coronavirus cases during those nationwide protests, the tool being used that experts say could make it worse. And where state health officials are worried we could see a second outbreak. Up next. Put on Channel 11 Morning News, there is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. I know you have a busy morning. I'm a mom, too, and you're doing a thousand different things. We want to make sure you know everything you need to know to get prepared for your day as you head out the door. You're going to get weather and traffic every 10 minutes. Jennifer is going to tell you the breaking news as it's happening. We're not repeating the same stories over and over. We're digging for those new details. You can be assured that you're going to get all the information you need before you head out the door.
Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news happening in Washington County. Welcome back. Today, masses are underway again at the shrines of Pittsburgh churches. They were canceled over the weekend after an employee's spouse was tested for COVID-19. Thankfully, we're told the test came back negative. Officials say they canceled masses just to be careful. Meanwhile, more people are now able to attend mass at churches in the Pittsburgh Catholic Diocese. Today, attendance at daily mass increases from 25 parishioners to 25 percent of the church's capacity. Yesterday was the first day for weekend masses since the diocese has had closed churches because of the pandemic. Everybody knows that uh, they have to come in with the mask. Uh, we have the hand sanitizers. We have the pews roped off. And um, they're separated with the social distancing and just follow the proper protocols and uh, just use common sense. The Pittsburgh Diocese is allowing small baptism, funeral masses, and private prayer and confession. A warning for drivers now. Pittsburgh is going to be resuming parking enforcement this week. The Pittsburgh Parking Authority says officers will enforce all city street meters and neighborhood parking lot meters now that we've entered the green phase. They're going to be issuing warning tickets for the first few days to remind people that enforcement has now resumed. Meanwhile, the Heinz History Center just announced all of its museums will reopen on July 1st. They're going to begin operating at 50% capacity. Uh, they will be implementing new social distancing policies, cleaning regularly, and they're going to install hand sanitizing stations throughout the museums. Chuck E. Cheese and talks with lenders now to raise money to try to avoid filing for bankruptcy. According to the Wall Street Journal, the restaurant chain is due for a $2 million loan payment at the end of this month. Now, Chuck E. Cheese was growing well before the pandemic, with sales up nearly 3% from last year. But the outbreak has badly hurt them. Apple will soon let customers buy iPads, Macs, and AirPods through monthly installments on their Apple Card. Payments will be managed through the iPhone wallet app and added to your monthly bill. Apple launched the card last year in partnership with Goldman Sachs. Users get a digital card connected to the Apple wallet and then a physical card made of titanium. A star-studded celebration for the class of 2020. The message shared on YouTube to graduating seniors. Plus, healthcare workers joining the calls for justice, why they say protesting is part of their mission in healthcare. WPXI Now. When a major story breaks, this is where you'll find 24 hour coverage. From the Channel 11 newsroom to our crews live in the field, we'll bring you the information you need right now. WPXI Now. Always on when you want the latest on breaking news.
put on Channel 11 Morning News, there is a team that has been working all night to get you the news you need. The news doesn't stop. We don't stop. As a mom, I know your morning is busy. We're going to give you everything you need from the breaking news desk to weather and traffic. When you walk out that door, you're prepared. Channel 11 News at 5, covering more news in Westmoreland County. Breaking now, the state health department has just released its daily coronavirus update. That's right. The latest count says there are 351 new cases, bringing the state total to just under 76,000. There are also 10 more deaths, bringing the total to nearly 6,000 since the pandemic hit in March. And take a look at the local numbers. No new cases in Beaver, Butler, or Fayette counties. And there are just two new cases in Washington and Westmoreland. Certainly good news for our region. Absolutely. And since moving into the green phase of reopening on Friday, local leaders are going to be spending the next few weeks keeping a close eye on cases. They want to make sure we do not see a huge spike in cases. Erie County, though, is one county that's really having a hard time getting control of the virus. On Saturday, they set a new single-day record with 31 new cases. Doctors there are afraid of a second outbreak. The governor says he knows residents in Erie are eager to move to green, but he says he can't risk it. But with these signs of community spread, the potential of community spread of the coronavirus, we need to contain it before it can move forward, uh, before the virus can move forward, before we can feel comfortable moving into the green phase. And this week, six new contract, contact tracers will be sent to the county health department to help stop the spread. So sunny and warm on this beautiful Monday afternoon, and those high temperatures apparently will be sticking around. Yes, I love it. Severe weather. Team 11 meteorologist Danielle Dozier joins us now with your forecast. Hey there, Danielle. Hey, ladies. It's definitely going to be a warm one today. Hotter, actually, as we go into Tuesday. Out there right now, we've got lower 70s with 73 in Pittsburgh. If you wanted to do a little running this evening, the humidity will be low. The temperatures will be warm. 81 degrees at 6 o'clock and 7 o'clock. Full on sunshine shine 79 degrees at 8 p.m. So still a very warm evening is in store for us as well. Our sun cast over the next couple of days showing quite a good bit of sunshine into Tuesday and we'll pick up a few fair weather cumulus clouds and some high clouds as well. Wednesday partly sunny so we do get on, on some sunshine but some storms will be flaring up with the heating of the day so we'll have more on that coming up and then more uh, sun returns as we head into Thursday so not uh, too bad as the forecast uh, goes on. We are we're going to be tracking the latest on the tropical storm, how it will influence our weather later on in the week. I'll have that for you coming up in just a few minutes. Danielle, tropical depression Cristobal making landfall last night on the coast of Louisiana, bringing heavy winds and flooding. My brother lives down there. He said it was a, just a torrential downpour. Parts of Mississippi also facing life-threatening storm surge. Whitney Wild has the latest from New Orleans. Here in New Orleans, even though the city was very much in the center of the path of tropical storm Cristobal, it largely avoided bearing the brunt of the storm. The impacts were mostly felt along the barrier islands, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and down into the Florida panhandle. The impact, though, you could see in some respect. So here along the Mississippi River, these bottom two stairs had been submerged at one point last night. The water line has since receded there. Uh, but fortunately, again, New Orleans largely avoiding the real impact of this storm. As this storm moves out of the Gulf Coast and into the central United States, there is still a big risk, and that's because there is rain on the backside of this storm, so storm surge continues to be a very big concern here in the Gulf Coast. In New Orleans, I'm Whitney Wild. The CDC says it is closely monitoring the demonstrations happening across our nation. A CDC spokesperson said protests make it difficult to maintain recommended social distancing and may put others at risk. We really want those individuals to highly consider uh, being evaluated and get tested. The CDC also raised concerns about the use of tear gas on protesters because it makes people cough, which helps spread the virus. Officials say it is too early to know what, if any, effect the protests will have on infections. 
Meanwhile, for many health care workers who battled coronavirus on the front lines, they say protesting is worth the risk. Here's NBC's Katie Beck. From New York to Minneapolis, Atlanta to Seattle, health care workers take a knee for racial injustice. <laughs> Many crossing from the front line of a pandemic to the forefront of a national protest. On days when Dr. Brian Leva isn't working in a hospital, he's wearing his white coat on Minneapolis streets. This isn't just a black issue, this is a human rights issue, and it is also a public health crisis. Providing protesters with band aids for blisters, water to stay hydrated. I carry an epinephrine pen in case somebody has an allergy attack. I carry aspirin. You know, I carry gloves. And because of the pandemic, I also carried a mask. Health experts warn protests could be the perfect recipe for spreading the deadly virus. Massive crowds, a lack of social distancing, many without masks could spark a second wave. It's a risk registered nurse Anna Maria Ruiz is willing to take. She's treating COVID-19 patients in Austin, Texas, and says marching is an essential job, too, for saving future lives. Everybody needs to take part. Everybody needs to participate because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take every single person to, to bring about this change. Dr. Natalia dorf Biderman came in on her day off to be part of this moment with her Minneapolis colleagues. I felt so compelled to be part of um, the, uh, the voice of health care. And in New York City, nurse practitioner Julius Johnson marches in between treating patients. Not While he me. protects against COVID exposure, Not he believes police brutality Not is an me. equal public health risk. I work alongside physicians, um, physician assistants, certified nursing assistants. Any of these people that hear this, I can't breathe, are going to go help. Are you at all worried about the repercussions of what might come? Absolutely. The problem is, is that if we decided to just stay home and COVID didn't kill us, then the situation that you see with George Floyd, situation that you see with Ahmaud Aubrey, situations you see with all of these people repeatedly, it may happen. Providers working to heal a national pain, this time outside the halls of medicine. Katie Beck, NBC News. Still ahead this afternoon, why the government is taking another look at the unemployment rate for May. In severe weather, Center 11, we cover weather everywhere you live. And we have the experience to get it right. We know the weather patterns across our neighborhoods and understand the unique influences on your area. It's why there can be heavy downpours in northern Allegheny County. While it's dry in Greensburg and rain is moving into Irwin. Our priority is to prepare you for the weather in your neighborhood. Count on severe weather team 11 on Channel 11 News. Tracking storms where you live.
Watch Catherine Amenta and Gordon Lesh on Channel 11 Morning News. Today we're learning that the jobs report that came out last week was actually wrong and the unemployment rate is probably higher than reported. On Friday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics reported the May rate was 13.3%. There was a note at the bottom saying there was a major error and without the misclassification error, the actual rate for May would likely be 16% but that would still be lower than the 19.7% unemployment rate reported in April. The Bureau of Labor Statistics is fixing the problem. More than 40 million Americans have filed for unemployment since lockdown started mid-March. State Department of Education said last week that school districts can resume in-person teaching and other activities on July 1st. But local leaders say that date's pretty unlikely right now. Before schools can reopen, districts need to come up with their own health and safety plans. And according to the TRIB, the school leaders are challenged to draw up these plans and get them approved by their school boards by July 1st. Most districts say they're setting their sights on a fall reopening. This weekend, YouTube honored this year's graduates with a Dear Class of 2020 celebration. The virtual commencement ceremony featured addresses from former President Barack Obama, former First Lady Michelle Obama, as well as former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice. In an uncertain world, time-tested values like honesty and integrity, empathy and compassion, that's the only real currency in life. Treating people right will never, ever fail you. Several celebrities also made appearances, including Beyonce, Taylor Swift, and Lizzo. Come this afternoon, filling an overwhelming need. How one community is stepping up to help families struggling during the pandemic. To be able to see her means everything to us. A local assisted living facility is finally reuniting loved ones. Why the owner is going against state recommendations in order to do this. You're streaming WPXI now, your source for original local shows. Get the inside scoop on all the hot events, entertainment, and celebrities in and around Pittsburgh every week. Stream Access Pittsburgh on demand anytime on WPXI now. Every 10 minutes, Scott and Trisha are going to tell you how to start your day. Every single time we go to Scott, he's bringing new information. He wants to make sure you're prepared for your day. You ask Trisha where is the closure, she knows it, and three ways around it. They're the best in the city. 
severe weather coverage where you live on Channel 11 News. She's got a lot of worries that when are you going to see her? What if you never get to see her again? Not seeing loved ones has been particularly tough for families of residents in long-term care facilities. And even now that Western Pennsylvania is in the green phase, they continue to face restrictions. But Channel 11's Angie Moreski learned one local assisted living facility has defied the state's guidance and opens its doors to families today. Hey, Dorian. Starting Monday, Paramount Senior Living in Peters Township will once again allow family inside to visit their loved ones. We were very, very, very happy. Doreen Leach can't wait to see her 93-year-old mom. We were ecstatic. In fact, we were crying about it because we never thought we'd get to we never thought we'd get to see her this early. It's been almost three months of restricted visitation, especially hard for residents like Bill Pope, who misses his wife. Every day she comes to the window and looks in, and we wave at each other, but it's not, it's not the same. This is the area that the visitation will take place. Paramount's owner says it was not an easy decision to open the doors against state recommendations, but believes the isolation is taking too much of a toll on residents. What we're trying to do at this point is add some type of happiness to the people that live with us and their family members. Some assisted living facilities are already doing outdoor visits, but Paramount will be the first we know of to begin indoor, in-person visitation. Now, all skilled nursing facilities, including Paramount's, continue to follow the Department of Health restrictions on visitation for them, which limits it to virtual visits and visits through the window. Paramount says going from outdoor only to indoor visits will be a test for how it can be done safely. Safely. The facility is COVID free now and they believe they can keep it that way. Do the folks here feel like guinea pigs? No, they feel like it's Christmas morning on Monday, so they're excited for it. Do you have any flu-like symptoms? No. All right. They'll follow strict precautions, screening all visitors who will have appointments, wear masks, and maintain social distance. No hugs, no touching, no kisses. For many who thought it would be months before they could see their loved ones, it's worth the risk. And when I called my mom to tell her, she was so happy. To be able to see her means everything to us. Angie Moreski, Channel 11 News. Severe weather Team 11 forecast. It's going to be a warm one today. The temperature will go up to 81. We're going to have plenty of sunshine, a light wind out of the northeast, low humidity, just a fantastic weather day once again. We're stringing a couple of them in a row, which is nice. Tonight, it won't be as cool. We're looking at a low near 60 here in the city, near 60 in Beaver, 56 in Greensburg, and 57 in Indiana. Put it in perspective, this morning we had low 50s, and also the prior morning we also had low 50s as well. So about 60 degrees at 6 o'clock. Plenty of sunshine. We should have a few clouds, though, for the morning tomorrow, as well as some clouds here and there throughout the day, but it's going to be hot. I mean, we're already at 66 degrees at 8 o'clock in the morning. If you are not heading into work and you're doing a little golfing tomorrow, the temperature will be climbing into the lower 90s, and I wanted to show you this because it's an important graphic that I've put together. So uh, if the outside air temperature is 90 degrees, just for a reference, the inside of your car in 10 minutes gets to 100 109 degrees in just 30 minutes, 124 degrees. So that's why we always say you want to check the back seat in days like uh, tomorrow, really, when the temperatures get really hot and into the 90s. So uh, just a couple of quick notes. You want to drink plenty of fluids, wear light-colored clothing, check on the elderly and your pets, of course, as temperatures surge into the 90s tomorrow. Here is the latest on uh, depression. It's Cristobal, and he's... Uh, here spinning over Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. This is our tropical satellite, so you're seeing the clouds and that counterclockwise spin as it continues to lift north. It is currently a depression with winds of 35 miles per hour. There's where the center is. And uh, the track actually continues to take it up toward the north and then a slight curve toward the north-northeast, continuing to weaken as it moves over land. And uh, with this said, what's going to happen is, is this is going to get caught up in a weather system that's going to be pushing 
moving off to the east, and when that happens, it's going to be leading to a chance for showers and thunderstorms across our area. Something else that we're going to see is the humidity will start to climb as well. So it does actually climb into the day tomorrow. That's some new information for you. And then Wednesday, it's going to feel tropical. And when you factor in how much moisture we have in the air and how hot it's going to be, and with a cold front coming into the area, we're going to have a risk of some strong to severe thunderstorms. We're already actually highlighted in a risk for scattered severe thunderstorms from the Storm Prediction Center. Damaging winds, large hail, and isolated tornado threat all in the picture for Wednesday. And we'll keep you posted on how that forecast unfolds. In the meantime, 91 Tuesday, and it'll feel more like low to middle 90s when you factor in the high humidity. It'll be humid on Wednesday as well. Thursday, Friday, we do cool things back off just to the 80 degree mark, so it's still going to be pretty warm out there. And then we'll have some isolated showers and storms in the forecast for the weekend. But overall, just stay weather aware out of the entire week. It just looks like Wednesday is going to be one of the bigger weather days, so we will certainly keep you posted. Danielle, thank you. Tourists stranded in a foreign country because of the pandemic, the stranger that helped them, how they're showing their gratitude. But first, here are today's local steals and deals. Hi, I'm Lisa Robertson, and I have the best idea for you with local steals and deals. Right now, we're sanitizing, we're cleaning, we're disinfecting, right? A million times, a million ways. Oh my gosh. How would you like to have something do it for you with no chemicals? What? I know. This is from 4ID and it's the best idea ever. So here are the options we have for you. This is the large. So this is simply, they call it a lunch bag, but it's a large bag. You open this up, you put whatever you want to sterilize in here, right? You close it, you plug it in and turn it on and walk away. It does it for you. Then you have the medium, same thing. You want to sanitize something, you put it in here, you close it, you turn it on, you walk away. You close it, you turn it on, you walk away. There's even a phone sanitizer. You put your phone in there, you close it, you turn it on, you walk away. There's even a wand for taking it on the go. And here's the best part. You walk in the door and you put your keys in here. Are your keys sterile? No. Do you touch them all the time? Yes. You put your keys in here, you put your jewelry in here, you put your wallet in here, you put your gloves in here, you put your mask in here. And by the way, everyone else in the household does. Everybody puts their stuff in here. And then they close it, and they turn it on, and they walk away, and it's not using any chemicals. I love that. You don't have to use chemicals because these are actually using UV light, and they're giving you 99.9% .9 sterilization rate. That is amazing. I love the fact that this is part of your new routine. I love the fact that this is by your back door and everything on you goes in here. I love the fact that if you have a baby around, all the baby stuff goes in here because they keep putting everything in their mouths. I love the fact that who wants to think about, wait a minute, this is my favorite ring. I keep wearing it. I bet it's not sterile. I'm going to put it in here. Some jewelry, you don't even wash, you don't want to wash your hands with the jewelry on because it might not be good for the jewelry. Put it in here. There's a million reasons, but there's one way, and that's putting it in here, closing it, turning it on, walking away. If you go to localsteals.com right now, all of these great ideas are 40 to 43 percent off. It's just one of the amazing ideas we have for you, and I guarantee you're going to want a bunch of them. We've all slowed down, hunkered down to keep our distance, and the weather's helping to hold it together. It's getting us through our day, our chance to get outside. So while we're all figuring out our new normal, one thing you can always count on, Severe Weather Team 11. We're here. Or here. Forecasting your weather. When you need to get outside for some fresh air, or you need to plan an indoor activity. We'll be here to keep you safe at home because we're Severe Weather Coverage You Can Count On.
Watch David Johnson and Peggy Finnegan on Channel 11 News at 5. Many tourists were stranded in foreign countries because of the coronavirus. Now, a group that was stuck in Sri Lanka made this video thanking a cafe owner who took care of them when their money ran out. The organizer, the owner rather, organized free food and rooms to keep the visitors safe. We are eternally grateful to those who made us feel at home. At the time when humanity is hurting. Cafe owner also donated $27,000 to tour guides who lost their income because of the quarantine. Fantastic story. It really is. Times, though, have been very tough during the pandemic, and a lot of people are still trying to get back on their feet. The Salvation Army is helping some local students. They're collecting gently used clothing for children in kindergarten through the 12th grade. In fact, volunteers collected about 25 bags of clothes at this drive through collection in Mount Lebanon in just the first 30 minutes. A lot of people don't even have money and funds to go and purchase clothes, so this is, will be a great aid to the community. You can drop off your donations at the Salvation Army on McNeely Road. in Pittsburgh. That is the great message from Pine Township musician Nick Navari, the 24-year-old sharing his rendition of the Journey Classic on YouTube. He filmed himself playing, this is neat, at 28 iconic Pittsburgh locations, including Heinz Field and Kennywood. And Peggy, we were singing it all morning long. <laughs> it's a catchy one for sure. Love that story. Well, that's all for Channel 11 News at noon. Our next newscast is coming up tonight at 5 o'clock. Thanks so much for watching and have a fantastic afternoon. Channel 11 Morning News is committed to covering the reopening of our area, bringing you what's happening now. They just flashed the open sign to welcome all customers back in. What's new? Big announcement for parents. It is safe for your kids to go back to school. Protests involving hundreds of people in our area won't impact the green phase. And what's next? With experts weighing in. Eight out of ten people say they really want to get behind small business.